What's up guys? Welcome back to another simplified astrophysics video. This video is going to be all about exoplanets, what they are and how we discover them. Let's get started. So an exoplanet, quite simply, is just a planet that lives outside of our solar system. To get some context on this, let's take a look at this not to scale visual. This dot here is us on Earth. The other smaller dots are our neighbors in the solar system. Mercury, Venus, us, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and the Sun in the center. Our solar system is a part of a galaxy called the Milky Way, which in itself is home to countless other systems of stars and planets like our solar system. Our solar system is just one small star-planet system among millions. Those planets not in our solar system are called exoplanets. But to make things a whole lot more complicated, our Milky Way galaxy is in a universe with at least 100 billion other galaxies. Those galaxies have millions of star exoplanet systems in them. So an exoplanet is just a planet not in our solar system, and now you have some context on where these planets live. Now, what are they like? Exoplanets are just like any other ordinary planet. They too rotate on their axis, and they too orbit a star. If you're watching this video from an exoplanet, you're on a planet that has all that sort of fun stuff we have here on Earth. Days, years, whatever. But that stuff will be quite different on different exoplanets. Some exoplanets, like SWIFT J1756.9-2508b, orbit their star and complete a year in about 45 minutes. Other exoplanets, like 2 mass J2126-8140, take over a million Earth years to orbit their star and complete a year. Exoplanets have all sorts of extreme characteristics like these. There are exoplanets that are just a fraction of our size, and there are exoplanets that are many times more massive than we are. There are exoplanets with crazy densities, ages, albedos, distances to their stars, and so many other characteristics. There are even some exoplanets that are remarkably similar to us. I'll make a video on that soon. Let's talk about how exoplanets are detected. Oh, and by the way, the people that first discovered exoplanets recently won the Physics Nobel Prize. I made a video that you can check out on that right here. Exoplanets had been theorized for a very long time. Philosophers and scientists had written about them for centuries. But the first exoplanet wasn't actually detected and confirmed until 1988. Why? What took us so long to detect exoplanets? What made detecting them so difficult? You see, the thing is, is that exoplanets orbit stars. Really bright stars way brighter than the exoplanet itself. Exoplanets are just regular planets, so they're not exactly the brightest objects. When astronomers observe the sky, the extreme bright light from the star that the exoplanet orbits obscures the sight of the exoplanet. So when the scientists would take out their telescopes and look at the sky, all they would see was a bright star. But astrophysicists developed a way to overcome this. It's a very indirect method of detecting an object, but it gets the job done. Astrophysicists decided to find stars which they believed to be reasonable candidates to have exoplanets orbiting around them. They would look at these stars to see if there were any disruptions in the shining of their light. If they saw a specific type of disruption in the shining of that star's light, a type of disruption in which the light from the star appears to be repeatedly blocked in uniform time intervals, that would signify that an exoplanet is passing around that star. To better understand this, look at this simulation. Imagine this exoplanet orbiting this star. From far off, we just see the star. The star's bright light blocks any view of the exoplanet. At a certain point in its orbit, the exoplanet will come in front of the star, and that will block the star's light temporarily. We call this passing by exoplanets in front of their stars a transit Exoplanets transit in front of their stars and temporarily block the light from that star, which allows us to determine that an exoplanet is there. 
Let's look at this NASA diagram for a better understanding. Here you can see the exoplanet transit in front of a star. As the exoplanet transit in front of the star, there is an observed drop in the brightness that we detect on the light curve. That drop in the brightness on the star's light curve indicates the transit of an exoplanet around that star. We've detected over 4,100 confirmed exoplanets throughout our universe, most of which are in our Milky Way galaxy. The number keeps climbing, so it's highly likely that there are many more exoplanets throughout different galaxies in our universe. This method of detecting exoplanets probably seems quite iterative and tedious. I mean, you sort of just have to choose a star and see if that star has an exoplanet orbiting around it. And if it doesn't, you've got to move on and choose another star and repeat the whole process over again. It's almost like running through an algorithm. What can do iterative algorithms like that real fast? What can run through massive data sets and apply the algorithm to each data point and output great results? Ooh, 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 me, 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 me. I can solve algorithm real good. I'm sorry, bud, but uh, you really can't. But you know what can? A computer. Computer science and programming are already enormous parts of astrophysics. There's a growing movement in astrophysics to use machine learning and artificial intelligence. And one use for those two would be in exoplanet detection. Machine learning and artificial intelligence could pile through the massive data sets of stars that astronomers have and use image recognition software to determine if there are any changes in the star's brightness. That would indicate the presence of an exoplanet. Using machine learning and AI might help us locate close to every single exoplanet out there. Of course, such machine learning or even full-on artificially intelligent technology has not been fully developed yet, but there have been some pretty cool developments. Last year, an undergrad at UT Austin wrote a machine learning AI program that detected exoplanets. And there's so much research going on. NASA and Caltech have even partnered on a large project to use machine learning to detect massive amounts of exoplanets. As we keep finding more exoplanets, we're going to learn more and more about the universe that we call home. We're going to find exoplanets that are incredibly different from ours. We're going to find other exoplanets that are remarkably similar to ours. And our methods in detecting these exoplanets are going to keep improving. And who knows what amazing applications the research into exoplanet machine learning and AI could have. Well folks, that is all I've got on exoplanets today. I want to make another video on this topic soon, particularly about life on exoplanets. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I really hope you learned something new. If you did enjoy the video, please drop a thumbs up down below because by the way that really helps out a lot. And comment any questions, concerns, feedback, etc. I'll try my best to get back to you. And if you like what you're seeing on this channel and you like my videos, please, please, please hit that subscribe button because that also really helps out a lot. I'll see you later.